Hey there, I'm here to talk about VR today, but before I dive a little bit deeper into that topic, I just want to touch a little bit on this topic, on Steam Deck, right? So the main reason why I have pre-ordered this device is because I, um, I am a geek and I have fully expected this to be a geek device, like a, a handheld PC. You can argue that this is a handheld PC, but I will argue that this is not what I got. Uh, instead, what Valve sent me uh, via mail uh, is actually a handheld gaming console, in my personal opinion. So what I expected was that this is going to be some kind of a hacked together device, like a, you know, like a PC with Linux and some games on it with Steam. Uh, that would somehow out run like we used to run it in Windows. I wasn't even considering the new interface uh, that they are going to make uh, for Steam Deck, but rather the old one uh, that they called Big UI, right? So all of this previous experience which I had with um, Linux gaming before uh, and PCs and how much uh, power they could cram into such uh, such a well, such a small space, right? Uh, I have expected this to be a device on which I would be able to play some games, but primarily I would use this as a hacking device, like I would connect a keyboard to it, I would connect a mouse to it, maybe I would be somewhere outside using this instead of my laptop or something like totally geeky looking guy, uh, like, you know, detached monitor from a keyboard. Like, w what is this? Think like what, what is he doing, right? I definitely need to 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 put in some good words to to this company, right? They have provided us with a really good user experience. This this is the accent, right? The user experience is off the charts on this device, and a lot higher than I have ever expected at the moment when I have, well, I haven't paid for it. You know when when they um, when the pre-orders were up, but later when my uh, when my number was up for for the actual order, right? But uh, nevertheless, I did pay for it before I knew what exactly am I getting. So from terms of VR, there have been uh, numerous rumors on the internet about something called Project Deckard, right? Uh, first, it appeared in uh, I think Steam VR uh, source code or something like that. Uh, and it suggests that it is going to be a standalone headset, something akin to uh, Meta's uh, Quest, right? And uh, it is expected to have inside-out tracking, which is completely logical for a, a standalone uh, Quest. Maybe it would have some innovative uh, lenses uh, with with wider uh, I, the, the usual ex expectations, right? So, so Steam already, Steam VR already has. Uh, like foveated rendering. Uh, if you know, if you don't know what that is, it, it's like uh, when you are uh, watching in a certain direction, there must be uh, some hardware sensors that that can detect your eye movement, and then the GPU processor will only be used to render the maximum sharpness. Uh, in the direction where you are currently looking, and everything else will be blurred out anyway, whether you're looking uh, looking at it or not, right? So, so it, it's like a resource uh, saver, smart resource saver. So you can uh, have the exact same um, quality of the presentation in the direction where you are watching, without needing as much GPU power as you would otherwise uh, if you would render the whole scene uh, in, in the maximum resolution, right? But you're not even watching in these directions, so it's a wasted um, compute power. So this is one of the other rumors that it's being um, talked about. Uh, maybe some modular components. Uh, s some people have discussed that like, an, like a possibility. And all that, you know, take it as a grain of salt. Uh, it, rumors will be rumors. Uh, probably a lot of this is actually true uh, during this stage of de development because Valve did say that they are working on a next-gen 
uh, VR hardware. Whether they will release to the market anything, that remains to be seen. It's, it's up to them if they want to release anything, but it's for sure that they are working on something. Um, and what they released in between was the Steam uh, Steam client application, a Steam link for the Oculus Quest. You can install it on the Quest uh, from the Quest store and you can use Wi-Fi in your home networking to connect uh, to your PC and stream your PC VR games uh, via legit um, Steam application on your Quest, right? Uh, you do need Windows for that for now at least for the official Steam Link client and they recommend NVIDIA graphics cards although I have tested it with Radeon 600, uh, 6000 uh, series and everything worked just fine um, but I think um, the the newer uh, codecs like um, I'm not sure if NVENC is being used but for sure AV1 uh, is like the future of, of these kinds of technologies so you might um, you might want to consider upgrading to the NVIDIA 4000 graphics cards or the 7000 Radeons if you want to prepare for some of these uh, future streaming endeavors, right? There is also an application on Linux that can link up your Quest and your PC on Linux, right? Uh, it's called ALVR. Uh, it comes with a launcher that auto updates itself and it, it works pretty good nowadays. You, you can you can check it out. It's free. Um, and as I said, it works OK. Uh, it, there will be some quirks during the, the during the setup, but generally it's a solid experience while you're waiting for any other or better solution, right? Or while you're waiting for Valve to catch up with uh, their Linux uh, counterpart of their Steam client for, for the Quest. So where I'm going with this video, right? Um, what I expect from Valve to release and what makes sense to me would be something fairly similar to the Meta Quest. So how they could execute this, there are a couple of ways that I can think of, right? One of the simplest ways that they could do it is they could just take this hardware or uh, to be more precise, take a more advanced version of this hardware, put it inside their new VR standalone headset, uh, tune it a little bit towards the frame rate performance because this is the main um, thing that you need to have on, on VR, right? It's like 72 FPS is like the bare minimum of what VR should be. Uh, 90 FPS is very much recommended and 120 FPS is becoming increasingly more the standard for VR gaming because the more frame rate you have, the less of the chance that you will have motion sickness due to the uh, disconnect between your uh, physical senses and what your eyes can see uh, and due to latency and all kinds of things like that. If they would put the x86 hardware and Linux inside their um, headset, in my opinion this would be the easiest way to do it and also the most geeky hacky way uh, for me and a lot, of a lot of other people to get on board and like take our money and I'm gonna explain this in a little, in a little bit uh, but the problem with this approach would possibly be uh, due to the battery requirements because if you have any experience with Steam Deck, uh, if you push this device towards 60 FPS, you can barely pull like two hours out of this. Uh, and this is the old device. The new one has like three hours at the minimum, and this is when you are pushing it. If you decrease the um, uh, frame pacing, uh, to half of the of the what what 60 fps gives you like 16 if you skip from 16 milliseconds to 32 milliseconds uh which gives you like i don't know 40 fps then you will have like double the amount of uh, battery life so this one skips from two hours to four hours and the new one the old one skips from three hours to six hours this is already a lot just by decreasing the frame rate but in vr you need to further increase the frame rate and this spends this uses a lot of battery power so i'm not really sure how much vr time valve can pull off with this hardware but if they have something newer like rdna4 based 
um, at best they might double this time but even if they would double this time it would still be very tight in my opinion and I think they would be competing with that magical two hour mark still right and the other problem that you need to count on is the resolution so foveated rendering I think it would be the key part of this whole setup because um, all things considered I don't think they can accomplish uh, all the battery power and all the frame rate and all the required resolution in the direction where you need to watch uh, you know in, in one single package with add x86 hardware so this is pretty difficult with what we have on the market right now one of the other options is that they could go with something like arm uh, and snapdragon uh, ch chipsets which uh, meta is doing but the trouble with that um, approach is that they would need to um, convince game developers to start developing for their new platform because this will no longer be the standard x86 um, they could use proton to help mitigate some of these things but i don't think that we have seen any of this in real world usage just yet and um, emulating a different platform might prove to be a little bit difficult depending on what kind of optimization they are capable of uh, in, in installing in their arm chip uh, because if you look at what Apple is doing, right? Apple is pushing their developers, I mean, not their developers, but general game developers to start developing video games for uh, Apple Mac hardware, uh, which is also based on um, ARM uh, architecture, right? And they are providing for their developers something pretty akin to Valve's Proton solution but in their case it's also translating the architecture and I am absolutely sure that some of the performance is getting lost uh, on this translation uh, from one architecture to the other one so if you want to maximize your battery life you're going to put on a you know weight scale which parts uh, are more important important for you whether it will be running the arm architecture and getting out of the box better battery life uh, or like destroying this battery life uh, with additional emulation of the other architecture there is one more thing that is possible for valve to do which is in my opinion unlikely but however still possible uh, Meta has their own VR operating system. It is based on Android. They call it Meta Horizon operating system. It's, as I said, an Android based, the complete package uh, with uh, support for ARM, ch ARM chips. Uh, but the trouble is that you need to make games uh, in, you, you need to make Android games for that uh, kind of system. There is Godot game engine already prepared for Meta Horizon OS. Uh, there is Unreal and I'm pretty sure that Unity is also ready for VR and for Android gaming uh, such as Meta Horizon OS. However, I, I'm not really seeing Valve uh, putting their selves into the hands of uh, Meta, Meta's operating system. Meta did say that they will allow Meta Horizon OS to be installed on any third-party hardware with any third-party like storefront like steam is but how realistic it is for steam to approach the android market with their steam storefront i'm not sure about that i'm really not sure there at the moment when you look at the most popular vr games both on steam and on meta horizon os and in meta's uh, vr store you will see a lot of uh, parallels right a lot of same games are being published at the same time on both platforms so in, in this regard there might be a little uh, there might be a small chance for valve to convince these game developers just to publish their existing android vr games uh, into their steam storefront after they build their new device based on Meta's Horizon operating system uh, like they're currently doing with Windows, right? They are publishing Steam mainly on Windows and they are pretty much enjoying their 
uh, benefits over there. So it's not completely unlikely for Valve to, you know, accept Meta's Horizon OS. But from my perspective, I'm, I might be uh, somewhat biased here and like cheerleading for Linux to be adopted in this case. But it is what it is, right? We'll see where this goes. One of the things that um, I would like to see Valve doing is this x86 standalone VR headset uh, purely because of my geekiness, right? I would have the ability to put on my VR headset with Linux desktop integrated in it, my shell, my um, little VR games, my um, wh whatever I'm using on Linux right now, everything will just work in that, especially if it's x86, right? What do you think about what I said? I mean, does any of this make sense to you? And which way would you like to see Valve going with their next VR endeavor? Please put down some comments and I'm going to see you in the next video.